Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose, yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, mm -hmm, you guessed it, in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Oh my word, yes, Christmas is just a few short weeks away, and so today I thought I'd bring to you five quick and easy Dollar Tree DIYs that make for great gifts to give. They are quick, they are easy, and most of all, they are budget friendly, so they're not gonna break the bank this holiday season. These are DIY gift ideas that anyone would absolutely love to receive. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let me give you five quick and easy DIY gift ideas that I think you should absolutely try, because why not? DIY your way through this holiday season. It's budget friendly. People love DIY handmade gift ideas, I know I do. Okay, I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Alrighty, let's jump into this. I'm going to be using these wood rulers. This is a four pack that you can get from 99 cent store. You can get them at Walmart too. These are about 40 cents a piece at Walmart. I want to say you're going to need about six of them. Yes, six. These rulers do need to be cut down a bit. It's easy to do just by using a razor and using a ruler as a guide when scoring the wood. I guess I'm doing these at eight and a half inches. It's been a while since I made one of these. You're gonna need four rulers at eight and a half inches. You can easily just snap them apart. If they snap apart a bit uneven, don't worry about it. Just kinda smooth them out as best you can and use some sandpaper, yeah, and you'll be good to go. Using the first four rulers, you're gonna need four that are eight and a half inches and three that are three and a half inches. And so those scraps off to the side are ones you're not gonna wanna throw away. Then using some of Aileen's tacky glue, I'm gonna glue two of the eight and a half inch rulers together and you're gonna need two sets of these. You should have two full rulers left. You're gonna need to cut two inch pieces and you're gonna need eight of those. And with those eight, we are going to glue them together just like so, and these are going to act as corners. Yes, corners to a, what is going to be a ruler crate. This would be a breakdown of everything you should need, the two eight inch pieces, the two three and a half inch pieces, and four corners. Now all that's left to do is assemble this crate. And so to do that, we're just gonna do it just like you see me doing here. Pretty simple and the outcome is going to be rustic and farmhouse because we're using wood rulers. I wanted to give this crate just a bit of color, but I didn't want to paint over it because I want the detailing of the rulers. I don't want to lose that. So I'm using one of my favorite methods of staining and that's using liquid shoe polish. You can get two different colors of liquid shoe polish at the 99 cent store, which is brown and black. The brown has a bit of an orangish red undertone to it, but while your wood is wet, if you take and go over it with the black shoe polish, it darkens it up and gives it a real nice walnut color. I wanted to add a bottom to this crate. I'm not looking for anything fancy. This is for decor purposes only. So I went ahead and cut up some of Dollar Tree's trifold display board to the size of this and I'm just gonna glue it down. Yeah, with some Aileen's glue. I picked up five of these milk jugs that I am adding some of Waverly's chalk paint to because every crate needs milk jugs, right? After I give these a good coat of some of the chalk paint, I wanna outline, I guess, the raised lettering, the elevated lettering. And so to do that easily without doing coat after coat and without having to sand down the paint, if you just take kind of a sponge dabber like this and lightly go over, the raised lettering, you're gonna get kind of the same look, the same effect, and we're not looking for perfection here. The more imperfect it is, the more perfect. Now, what else would you add to these milk jugs other than some of Walmart's lamb ears? I love the subtle green of these lamb ears. I think that they add just the pop and touch of color 
that you need to a piece like this. If you want to add some of the cotton to it, you can do that too. And it's really just going to elevate it and give it more of that rustic farmhouse feel. I think that this is such a fun piece. It's budget friendly and who wouldn't love to receive this as a gift. This next DIY goes down as one of my favorites. It's using Jenga blocks and we are going to glue together. I think here I have 12 Jenga blocks glued together and you're gonna need four sets of those. Now, the amount doesn't really matter because the amount is gonna be based on the size that you want this to be. And you'll see here that I ended up doing different sizes, but you're also gonna need four sets of five blocks, well really 10 blocks, because we are making kind of a platform and a top to what is going to be our candle holders. And so the base is gonna be the same, it's just gonna be the height of what you want your candle holders to be. So if you just want one, you're gonna do it whatever size. If you want three, you're gonna do three different sizes. Again, I am using one of my favorite methods of staining, which is the shoe polish. Once I got that brown on, I am going back over it with none other than the black shoe polish to take some of that red and orange out of it. And this is a good example of how that shoe polish does it. I love the walnut color that you get when mixing these two liquid shoe polishes together. And like I said, since I did a set of three, this here is the smaller, this is the medium, and through the magic of video and a snap of the fingers, look at how amazing those look. I thought I'd finish the base of these off with some rope, well the base and the top, just by lining that outside edge there and just kind of giving it more of that rustic look by adding the rope, a more finished look, if you will. For those of you who have been around my channel a while, you know I like to make flowers made out of twine. So just by simply wrapping the twine around your fingers several times, tying it off in the middle there, doing three bunches of those, it doesn't get any simpler than this. You can make your flower as full or as not full as you want it to be based on how many times you wrap it around your fingers. You're gonna take and just open up those bunches, separating out the loops. Then just by taking some hot glue and hot gluing them together, offsetting them just a bit, you have now just made yourself, look at that, a flower. But our flower needs a button in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue a dark button and look at how adorable that is. Easy peasy and budget friendly. Each of my candle holders is gonna be finished off with one of these. Why not? If you don't wanna do a twine flower, use a regular flower. Get creative, make it your own. Take what you like, leave what you don't. That's my motto. And lastly, the candles that are going on top of these pillar candle holders are these LED candles that you can get from Dollar Tree. I took some tissue paper and just covered them with tissue paper, taking these candles from bleak to chic. And there we have a finished set of rustic candle holders that are easy to make using Jenga blocks that would make for an amazing DIY handcrafted gift to give this holiday season. This next DIY is pretty easy to do and it is using popsicle sticks, these smaller popsicle sticks that you can get from Walmart by Create, Go Create. And you're gonna want some of these larger ones by Crafter Square that you can get at Walmart. If you really wanted to cut these down, you could and not buy the smaller ones from Walmart, but you're gonna get a better finished outcome because of the edges by using these here. So I say just invest because these popsicle sticks are gonna go a long way and you're gonna get a lot of this DIY. The glue that I'm using is this super glue wood glue that you can get at Dollar Tree. It seems to work the best for me. I've seen amazing results with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these popsicles together in the shape of a cross. Once I've got the base shape of my cross done, I'm gonna go ahead and take more of the popsicle sticks and I'm going to layer them, stacking them, giving this cross kind of that 2D, 3D feel. You're gonna layer it as high as you want your cross or as thick or as deep as you want your cross to be. The deeper it is, the more dimension it's gonna have, the more character, and guess what else? The more personality. And so yes, this is super easy to do. It is a bit time consuming. I would say to make one cross, it probably took me about an hour to do, which really isn't bad. But just by buying popsicle sticks and gluing them together like this, what an amazing gift to give that is so budget friendly. Look at how 
Look at how fun this turned out. This needs a coat of some of Waverly's antique wax. Of course it does. I stay true to my nature. Once I gave this a good coat of the antique wax, I figured it would be fun to add a fun fabric to the back of this cross and just kind of leave it open, but again, giving it more dimension by adding fabric to the back. Now, this is something you don't have to do, but I wanted to do it and you can really get creative with your choice of fabric that you put back on that. That's what makes it so versatile. And if you don't want to stain this, you can always just paint it. But again, I love the feel of the wood coming through the stain. And so I feel like that just adds to the rustic vibe of a DIY. And so I initially was gonna go with this fabric, but decided not to. I found this truck fabric at Walmart, figured this was adorable, and so this is what I decided to go with. And this DIY too shall have one of my larger twine flowers incorporated into it, right into the center of the cross. I love that, it finishes it off perfectly. How fun is this? Who wouldn't love to receive this? Go buy some popsicle sticks and make a few of these. So budget friendly if you wanna give gifts this year and you're on a budget. For this last DIY, you are going to need some plaster of Paris. You can get this at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's. You're gonna want some of this. To a bowl, I'm gonna add one cup of the plaster of Paris. Now when adding the water, I'm gonna add the water to get the plaster of Paris to the consistency that I need it to be. I don't want it to be too thick. I need it to be a little on the thinner side, but I don't want it too runny either. And so I need it to be kind of the consistency of yogurt. Yes, yogurt. Once we've got that consistency, guess what we are going to do with this plaster of Paris? For those of you who have been around my channel a while, you know, yes, I am going to take some fake flowers silk flowers that you can get from Dollar Tree and I am going to dip them in this giving these fake flowers that plaster look like we handcrafted these flowers wait until you see the outcome of these flowers it is amazing and what again is great about this DIY is you can really get creative with the flowers while your flowers are wet you are going to want to place them on some parchment plate paper just so they don't stick to allow them to dry this here is a mum, which actually ended up turning out amazing. And again, these are just going to be placed on the parchment paper, whatever flowers it is that you want to give that plaster or that handcrafted look to, I say get creative. The mums really, these larger ones, really weren't my favorite because they didn't hold their shape as well as I wanted them to. But I will tell you that my favorite flower that turned out the best was that of the sunflower. Dollar Tree has these larger sunflowers or these larger daisies, I guess, if you will, that actually turned out the best. They kept their shape, these here. And um, because when you lay them flat, you can actually reshape them. And they seem to hold their shape the best. You can see that here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let these dry overnight. Once these dried up, and they did dry pretty quick, if you wanna do a second coat on them, you can. If you're seeing that you have some bare spots, go ahead, you're just gonna let them dry a bit longer or pop them in the oven to dry. But with these, obviously, I'm not gonna leave them this way. I wanna paint them, and the easiest way to paint them is to use some spray paint. The spray paint that I'm using today is this metallic, spray paint. This is an all-in-one paint and primer by Rust-Oleum. I've picked up the oil rubbed bronze. I loved this flat brushed amber and I've also got the satin nickel. I will tell you that once I sprayed these it did make them look amazing. I went with two different colors for these. I went with the oil rubbed bronze and the amber and what ended up being my favorite was the amber here is the oil rubbed bronze and this is the mum you can see that it didn't completely keep its shape some of them did and i actually ended up using them but look at how beautiful this amber paint turned out especially on the sunflowers down here so impressed with the colors this is the oil rubbed bronze kind of gives it that metal look if you will these are those smaller mums, which turned out amazing. And so with these, what am I gonna do with them? 
I decided to just glue them to some bottles and these were trying to replicate some bottles that I actually saw at Hobby Lobby. You can see them here and this was my version of replicating them and I think they turned out pretty dang close. And so I thought that these would be fun to gift by putting bath salts in. You name it, get creative, but look at how cute these smaller bottles are. Again, you can get these bottles at Hobby Lobby for about a dollar. These larger bottles I loved are from Dollar Tree. And just by placing one of these larger sunflowers or daisies on the front, look at how amazing this turned out. Such a budget-friendly gift. Dollar Tree has Epsom salt. They have bath salts that you can add to this. Calgon is a great one to add to these jars and gift them. Again, another handcrafted DIY gift idea for this holiday season when you're on a budget. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Kim Nolder, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY Christmas Advent Calendar. Kim, you did an amazing job. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. I told you, quick and easy. And did I say budget friendly? These are definitely DIY pieces that anyone would love to receive that you can feel good about gifting. I hope you all enjoyed today's five quick and easy DIY Dollar Tree gift ideas on a budget. Please make sure to give this video mm -hmm, a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, and I know I sound like a broken record, but each and every one of your thumbs up and the comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please.